Okay, uh, can I have a round of applause to just know uh, how exciting the previous sessions were so that we get motivated to come on stage. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, back please. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about bracing for tsunami of devices. I think we've, we've seen spectrum of devices so far and uh, I'm happy to say that there were a mix of consumer as well as uh, industrial kind of segment devices that we looked at. Is this really where we are right now? Is this, are we, are we yet on the cusp of where it explodes? or it's already exploded. I think that's what we're going to talk about uh, in this next session. Let me start by welcoming Harsha Angeri. Harsha uh, is an expert in smart energy and automotive systems. He works at uh, Bosch. Can I have uh, Sundar uh, Varandraj, please? Uh, he is the expert on connected retail. I don't know why this keeps switching to the next slide. He's uh, the expert on connected retail and security products. Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing anything, I'll just keep it here. Uh, and last and most important, Varun uh, Tarun Mishra from uh, Covaxis. He's the expert on intelligent manufacturing plants. Okay. I think there was a question here, uh, and before I get to the question, how many of you are hungry? Yes. Nobody? Yes. That is good. But I thought you might be hungry, and I just to make it exciting, we all yes. thought we should stand and deliver so that we know, literally stand between you and the lunch. And so, become more hungry. And become more hungry, sure. <laughs> so let me ask, uh, start by asking, what is the Internet of Things? And I think we had a gentleman here who was asking, what is That's internet thing? Is this that. internet of things? So this is an interesting picture that I saw on the net which said, you know, this dog is trying to browse and says, you know, nobody knows you're a dog. And that's the Wikipedia definition of internet of things. But let me hand over to Harsha and ask him, you know, from his perspective, his industry, what is industry, what is internet of things for him? So I think for us, the thing should be on the internet directly. So there's a lot of conversation that happens, but for as the thing, again, I'll reiterate, should be on the internet directly. So any device that you use to convert and so on may or may not be a puristic form of internet of things. Second, there should be peer-to-peer -peer possibilities between these things. So start thinking about what is the sort of the WhatsApp equivalent for the internet of things and uh, so on. Third, most importantly, it should be ubiquitous, deeply embedded all over the place. I mean, this is a, you can go to the previous chart. This is the slide, it is highly blown up, but what I want to show you is this. This is Internet of Things. So this has six to seven sensors with a radio fabricated in a semiconductor lab and the, request the camera not to attempt zooming in because you cannot spot it. Because these are five sensors, Internet of Things device that you can connect anywhere, it can go into any device. And that is what will make Internet of Things happen, the billions of devices that we are talking about. So what we mean by that is, so there's a lot of discussion that happens around, you know, for example, putting a bike or a car on the internet. There are various ways to do it. Obviously, we have been uh, looking at things like, how do we put a bike on the internet directly? This is real. I think you saw some other applications also in the Chart, but the key thing is, how do you put the ECU directly on the internet using these kind of devices? And then open up, so recently we even had a hackathon on connected car, open up the data so that people can build apps on that. But the bike should be directly on the internet. So that's how we think about Internet of Things. Super, thanks. Sundar, would you have a take from your perspective on the industries or what is Internet of Things for you? After all the definitions given by our great startups, right? I don't want to give a definition, okay? But uh, I, I want to uh, tell about a different tsunami, okay? And, uh, and that is uh, the tsunami of uh, startups which Ravi, Gururaj and others have created. A big hand to them. Okay? So having said that, I will not give a definition, but what I will, I'll just walk through this big retail store, right? And then you realize what internet of things could be for a large corporation, okay? So as you enter, you see these pedestals here? Those actually count 
and sense who you are, right? It's like a counter, people counter, right? Footfall counter, the pedestals which you see. There is also a security camera which is fitted to each of the pedestals. So the moment you come in, your face is being recognized, right? So they recognize your face. They know that, yes, this person does, doesn't come here 10 times and doesn't buy anything, right? He comes here and at least buys once in a while. And as you go in, when you go to a rack, for example, you see, let's say, 100 jeans, right? Then you pick up some jeans. They're all tagged with RFID tags or small antennas, right? So the shop guy knows, the store manager knows, right? This person has picked up this particular sort of item and article. And then whether he's going to buy or not, that we will see later. So then there's a heat map generated. Then there are CCTVs, etc., seeing what's really happening with articles, what's happening with each buyer and so on. And finally, you go to the EPOS station, right? So when you go to the EPOS station, you swipe your card. Then the analytics on you starts. So suppose you have purchased, let's say, a new type of iPhone or some other sort of device, right? So the moment you reach home, and suppose you want more of that sort of thing, the moment you reach home, all those ads or information on that sort of thing is available on your device at home, right? That, I would say, is a real Internet of Things in a practical way. Problem of IoT. Right, so it needs to be defined. Uh, you know, <coughs> he's connected. He's connected. <laughs> I'm not connected. <laughs> Joke support. But yeah, for me, IoT is not about just connecting the devices, which has been the predominant conception in the mind of the audience. For me, IoT is all about intelligence out of thing. Instead of Internet of Thing, the way I define, the way Covaxis defines is intelligence out of thing. And that's what the real application of IoT is. So for me, it's not just about connecting devices. Yes, that's where it starts. That's where possibility starts. But then uh, it's all about that, what kind of business cases you are deriving out of it and how you are making uh, the next evolution of human being the way we are going in the future. So that's where, according to me, the whole IoT is. Uh, predominantly, we are in the manufacturing space. We don't have to show this. Let's change it. The dog one was a better one. You know? So that's the whole idea is that how can you make a dumb thing? Now, thing could be anything. It's a variable. Assign any value to it. How can you make a dumb thing act intelligently? And that's precisely what we are started doing in manufacturing space. Because if you look at in manufacturing environment, people at the top are CEOs and plant here and presidents and vice presidents. At the bottom, there are people like operators who are many times illiterate, uh, semi-literate, quasi-literate, definitely not literate. So the point is that how can I make an operator behave and think uh, more accountable, more responsible, if not equal to a vice president, but very close to a vice president, right? And how will you make it happen? And that's precisely the application which Coaxis has built up, that we have built up a tool which, using IoT on, based on the IoT framework, the whole entire tool is in the hand of operator. He looks at it. The tool is intelligent enough to give him suggestions, advices, the whole analysis in on the fly in real time basis, that if you do this, you will save $5,000 for the company in next 10 minutes. If you don't do this, you are going to lose $5,000 in next 10 minutes. You know? So that's the kind of IoT application which we have come up with. So I think the next question, I guess the definitions are now in place. Uh, there are more questions I think you could take uh, towards the end of the session. But then the, the, coming back to the topic of today's talk, why is it a tsunami? I mean, is it just a wave? Is it like a bubble? Is it a hype? What is it? Why is it a tsunami? I think maybe Harsha, could you share some perspective on that with us? I mean, these are some placeholders of, you know, we believe by 2020, the number of people uh, you know, will be overtaken by number of devices, so 50 billion devices by 2020, uh, and you know, number of the population will be 7.6 billion. So that's you know, some of the examples talk about that. And as of 2014, there'll be nearly 2 billion connected devices that'll be shipped. So this, this is an example of it is probably rising up to become a tsunami, uh, maybe in next few years, if not today, but it's certainly rising up. So from your perspective. Uh, Harsha, something like this from automotive, is this what you will see as tsunami, number of gadgets coming in, or something like this that you call my room on internet. Can you explain what this is? Yeah, so I wanted to just take a simple example. This is actually my room, uh, which is on the internet. 
And in the spirit of uh, Internet of Things, uh, the only way I can, or I manage to open door, close doors, is using Twitter. Right? So that is Internet of Things. And uh, uh, just to explain why this is going to be a tsunami, this, according to me, is a very simple application. So it has door, my projector, my phone, so that if people know if I am lifting my phone, there is a Twitter that goes out, that kind of application. Very, very simple application. So I sat down and drew the finite state machine for the technically uh, inclined. What does this imply? So what it was earlier, the finite state machine of my room, and what is it now after it is IoT enabled? For a simple app like this, the states go up three to four times. Simple app like this. So when we talk about thousands of devices, millions of devices, the complexity of peer-to-peer -peer interaction, et cetera, goes up exponentially. So think of a finite state machine with 5 million, 6 million, or 15 million nodes, if you will. So how do you compute? What are the applications that come out of that? Do you need that kind of a thing? Is where the tsunami is going to happen, not just in putting the devices out. That is going to be the challenge. Second challenge, or where the tsunami is going to happen, is all said and done, the first wave of social media is more software oriented. Here we are talking about hardware devices. So you put 1 million pieces out there for a smart city program. Tomorrow, if it fails, who will go and pick it up? Who will go and service it? That's a significant challenge when you get into the hardware or physical uh, domain. So that is where, though there is going to be an influx, in the spirit of a tsunami, there are going to be a lot of challenges in terms of how you can manage it. So that's kind of where we come from. Sundar, your take, I think, uh, I thought this was a very interesting picture when you shared with me. Could you share more about what this is all about and perspective of tsunami? De defini definitely. In fact, uh, one of our friends uh, who showed that start the ECG machine, right? So now this is, I'm saying, the same thing could have also been done in India, right? This is a, but because it's from Ralph Lauren, it's a polo shirt. It's a special biometrics polo shirt, right? Till now, only machines used to be instrumented, right? Telemetry was always there, right? Used to measure a thousand points, stress, strain, meter things, in automation, again used to measure hundreds of things on devices and so on. But <coughs> I think on humans, now even humans have started getting instrumented in a way, right? So I'll just read out a small sentence, right? And you will see as if it's like a Star Trek sort of thing. Sensors knitted into the core with accelerometer, gyroscope, heartbeat monitor, the information collected by a data module and fed into iOS app monitoring stress, calories burned, respiration, heartbeat, energy output. I'm saying, what the hell is happening, right? This was this shirt was worn by all the ball boys. See, all our big tennis players didn't want to wear it, right? Because they want to experiment first on all the ball boys and other side guys. So this shirt has all the sensors, gyroscopes, and so on. It's an instrumented shirt. And it costs about $200, right? And the biometric shirt has all this stuff, and it was actually demoed there in the US Open in this year, right? So this is where the world is going, and many more such things are going to happen in the future. So, the tsunami, so somebody asked, okay, so what do we do? The tsunami is coming, right? You have to just embrace it, right? That's what you can do. Yeah, so tsunami, I would say there are three uh, dimensions of tsunami. Tsunami in all in a positive way, nothing in a negative way, uh, of course. Uh, so one dimension is, of course, you know, the hardware side. A lot of devices which are going to be over the net. The second is big data. IoT cannot be imagined without big data. So the IoT and big data has to go in together. You cannot have only IoT without, you know, uh, leaving big data aside. So that's the second tsunami. You know, the, the, the application which we have installed, single plant, manufacturing plant in India, is producing around 30 terabyte of data per year. I would like to store five years of data per plant, 150 terabyte, one plant. One large enterprise in India has around 10 plants, 150 into 10 plants, 1,500 terabyte of data in five. Ten years, you know. Imagine the kind of and what do you do with the data? Are these data meaningless? Not, definitely not. And that's the third tsunami. The impact of this is huge. The system, the best working plant and the best managed plant 
in India with best of the best automation, best of the best people, best of the best processes, after having our system has shown 30% improvement in less than a year. 30% production happening more in less than a year. That's the kind of impact. So the cost of now having data and IoT is much less than the positive impact it's going to create for the business. So I see three tsunami, a lot of device gadgets, two, a lot of data. So stop changing the money in business, start changing data. Trust me, that's the next 20 years of the world. And third, the impact. Perfect. I think, uh, so considering all this, the question that I had was, so when you were talking about a tsunami, is everything really going to get connected? Or is something that is useful that is going to get connected? Harsha, you have a take on that? Yeah, I think this is kind of the other way of looking at it. Do we actually need all this and put everything? So I'll again illustrate it with an example. So we have just launched a pro product which is on the energy side where we can monitor. So the problem was to monitor a lot of distributed assets that are out in the uh, field and how their energy consumption are happening. So we had three choices. One is, of course, use the traditional uh, route, wire up everything. Second is we could put Internet of Things sensors for all the devices that we wanted to monitor. But we picked the third route, which is this, so where we said that ultimately this is a sensing problem. We need to figure out what energy is being consumed by what device, if you will. So what we did is, I think, uh, taking off uh, your point, fundamentally use data analytics. So we do very high frequency sampling of the energy circuit, so we can actually figure out what patterns exist in each device. And based on that, we can actually figure out what all devices exist in the building, house, shop, whatever it is. So the good thing is we don't need any sensors. We just need a plug point outside the shop and we can figure out everything. Where did we miss things that are not on the energy circuit? So I can't figure out what the temperature inside is. There we use IoT, a direct sensor that can put the data on the internet. So just to illustrate, there are certain sensing mechanisms where you may not need unnecessarily to put a lot of sensors and then deal with hardware problems and so on. So think about where in truly sensing requirements you need and where you don't need. So that's kind of how we think about it. Sundar, from your perspective, you're talking about this, I don't know if this is really futuristic uh, airport, but I think you know more and help us understand what's happening at this airport. So, so the tsunami is not going to come, it's already there, okay? So, so <laughs> the tsunami with the presentation also, I don't know what's happening. So, <laughs> I'm so, not doing anything. All, all right, so, so if you see uh, our organization, though it's, it's not a marketing thing, okay? Uh, so our organization has actually connected everything in most of the airports in India, right? So the moment you come in and want to check out, you get your boarding card, right? You stand in front of the machine, okay, without pulling glasses, right? Still, that face recognition algorithm is not so good that it can see and recognize you if the cooling glasses are there, all right? Mm -hmm. So once you do that, the boarding card can come out. Then there are access control doors. When you go in further, in the building itself, there are more than at least three or 4,000 sensors. Three and 4,000 sensors? Temperature sensors, there are smoke detectors. All these things are there in every airport, okay? In other buildings in India, not so much. Definitely in Europe and US, it's it's proliferated everywhere. So in an Empire State Building, for example, there will be 10,000 sensors, some 100 video cameras, right? They all have to be connected. They're not excess of things, but it's really a requirement, right? At one time, because we, have, we were a brick and mortar company, we didn't know what to do with this data, right? Because fire, because we are in the fire and security business. Unless an event happens, you don't do anything with it. But then we realized suddenly that, oh, this is also called Internet of Things, all right? And a lot of big data was being generated. So across from multiple airports, buildings, and so on, we generate more than 10, 15, 20 million. Uh, that that's many sensors are connected, and that much of data is generated. Then we realize, what do we do with all this data, right? So now when technicians go to a building, to let's say uh, they have to do a preventive maintenance once in every three months. So when they go there, now at one time it used to be a very tedious process, right? You go to a building. If there are 10,000 sensors, you have to check every sensor. You cannot do sampling. Every sensor has to be checked. Indeed. You have to weed out all the dirty detectors. So now we are using a lot of big data algorithms, the concept of entropy and so on, and a lot of statistics to weed out those bad sensors and attack them in preventive maintenance first. 
And the preventive maintenance, which used to take nearly one month, for example, for a building, now takes hardly one week. And all the sensor data goes to the cloud, okay? And they're connected to the cloud wirelessly. Then each of the technicians is given a, IO, uh, a mobile device where he can switch on, switch off sensors and check them as he goes along in the building. So, you so know there's what a big I mean? productivity benefit which is happening already. So when I go to airport, I guess the time I get in, I do my bag security check-in and I go in through the uh, you know, X-ray machines and all that, I think to my terminal or my gate, probably it's 30 minutes with, without queues, but are you saying all that is happening while I'm just walking from one point to another where I'm just That is board? true. Wow. So, so, so you, you're already being monitored, your privacy is being invaded whether you <laughs> like it or not. Right. So, okay. So just on that point, when you go to a retail store, for example, okay, forget it. There are a lot of biometric stuff, right? Yes. So already, okay, with the Aadhaar stuff and all, and all this, already your data is out there, right? So well, you're doing marketing Okay, we'll come everyone. to the privacy concerns <laughs> later. But w what I'm saying is, everything is already getting connected. There's access control everywhere, right? There are CCTVs, there is intrusion detection, and all these fire alarms are already there, okay? So it's a very connected world, really, if you see, okay? So this is a place where you be believe the tsunami, so-called, is going to start, but you'll probably not be aware that the tsunami is already there, and we'll, we'll probably look at it uh, you know, as ease of experience of you know, going through it, right? With the explosion in retail, for example, in the pharma market, okay, source tagging is done for every ampule, every tablet bottle which is manufactured. Wow. So suppose you want to have a thousand heart operations, let's say, in Kaiser, in let's say, on the West Coast. So what you can assume is, just, there's something called distribution just in time. So because of the source tagging, those tents or whatever medical equipment is required to do the operation will reach the patient's bedside just two hours before, okay. right? Okay. And the wrong things cannot come, right? Absolutely. The correct scent has to come, yes. the correct medicines have to reach, because once the medicine is bottled or in ampules, you cannot know what it is, right? Sure. Yes. And nobody is going to test it in between. Right. So that is the extent of Internet of Things which is already there, sure. okay? You may not be calling it Internet of Things, but really speaking, that's what it is. Fair. Maybe from your perspective, I think uh, yeah, manufacturing so is something which probably very few people would know what's happening on the shop floor because you don't get, you know, not privileged to be part of that and see and understand what's happening. Maybe you can share something from there. Yeah, so uh, in fact, that's why I say manufacturing, it's, uh, you know, IoT had always been there. You know, when once internet started, your IoT had started. It's just that now we are trying to give a different terminology to a changing world because earlier it was just a computing devices. Now we are talking about any non-computing devices as well. So hence we are trying to demarcate old world with the new world with a new name. Conceptually it remains same. Everything is going to be on IP. Now in manufacturing world, this, this is precisely what we are doing now. All the machines, devices, your compressors, your wheel drives, motors, everything, your energy meters, everything needs to be monitored. Everything needs to be understood well and when I say understood well, not just whether it's working, not working, but also Beyond what is the dollar impact indeed. it is creating yes. to the company. Correct. Because a machine, a working machine, not necessarily doing a good job, mm -hmm. right? How do I know yes. as a plant head that this machine which appears to be working is actually creating a problem for me? It's, it's a dollar loss is happening every minute. Sure. So it's a very, very important hence to connect all those devices and present a meaningful business KPI which makes sense to the business at that particular moment which is in real time basis. Should we connect all devices of the world? Uh, the answer depends upon the user. Indeed. In fact, the answer depends upon the user that what do they want out of it. If there is a sure shot business case, connect. But what is the, the whole challenge lies for a company like us well and for the user well is that where should they spend on IoT and where should they not? Well said. So it's not just because connecting everything is a good thing, but yes, if there is a business case, and I'm sure there is a business case if you really think through, and anything which is priority for you, please connect. Sure. So let the marketing guys talk about those big numbers, all those analyst companies come out saying 50 billion sensors and 35 billion sensors, let them put out those numbers, I would we will say connect what is essential. I would say it's underrated numbers. Oh really? Me. Okay. <laughs> In, I will tell you a tip, he's talking about 300, 3000 sensors per airport. If you go to any Indian good plant, which is like in last 10, 15 years which has come, 
it would have more than 5,000, 7,000 sensors per plant. Wow. And how many people per plant? I mean, just want to get a sense of, you know, that the number said 20 by 2020, there'll be 7.6 billion people and 50 billion devices. Can you give a sense of, in that plant, how many people? I'm sure, were, I mean, if sensors? you look at the plant, I mean, if I, if I count every worker, operator, contract labor, everyone, any, all human, whoever I see yes. in a typical plant, including plant head, I would say a typical plant would have what? Uh, if you take... Uh, thousand people? Not even that. Dep it depends. depends upon sector to yeah. sector. But uh, if you take, uh, uh, you know, let's say uh, a human intensive sector, which sure. is textile, right. which is, let's say, automotive assembly line and so on. I would say per plant would be around, yeah, I mean, you know, let's say thousand to two thousand people. In terms of sensor, there are seven thousand, eight thousand sensors wow. easily. Wow. So we already exceeded in a sing, that. In a in a in a in a in a automotive plant in a paint section, the robo, which does painting, it that itself would have more than you know thousand sensors around them. Amazing. Amazing. So we already exceeded that count of number of people versus the devices, right? So, so uh, Amit, sorry, sure. Th that's true. It's exceeding. <laughs> but I want to just give another very good. See, the real challenge is in finding the correct use case. Correct use case. Blindly. See, each of these startups which we saw just before we spoke, I mean, they were fantastic. There is a fantastic use case which really uh, solves a real problem, right? And that is what is important. B lot of big data exists, right? But what do you do with it? For example, our CEO is asking, okay, now uh, we have put sensors all everywhere, right? How do we ma make money out of it? Sure. Right? Obviously, the customer is saying the sensors anywhere you put, right? Because when there is a fire, they should all work, right? Sure. So why should I pay for, for it, right? Got it? So it depends on what you want to do and who's going to pay for what piece. And that mm -hmm. is very important. Sure. So I'll give only one classic example because just to tie up, he said automotive, he said manufacturing plant. So I have seen this particular fantastic, I will not name the company, but this is something which we did at one point of time. So Google Glass, everybody speaks about it, but not many people really experiment with it. So this is what I saw happening. So the inspection in the shop floor, because before a car is shipped out, there is a 90 point inspection done. Yes, right? that is correct. Yeah. So when the 90 point inspection happens, so normally the guy would have a, uh, a of, sheet yeah. of paper. Yes. He will note it down very tediously. He will take pictures with the camera. This total process takes nearly three to four hours. Wow. And then when he comes back, he fails to enter all the data in a spreadsheet. All those problems exist, right? So now what has happened is he has been given a Google Glass, right? And to his belt, there is a small pad. So what happens is, and there's a camera here. So as he goes around the car, the three hours has come out around 15 minutes. There you go. There's lots and that's of a fantastic use case yes. because that is real IoT. In the sense, you can obviously connect any, any damn thing to anything, <laughs> right? But the thing is, there should be some real end use of it, right? Indeed. For the benefit of humanity. And that's what it is. Right, perfect. Right? So I think... In and the to make just to you know, prove the point that how devices will overtake human population is very simple. If you take average family size in India, four, five, six, yes. if you count number of gadgets every house has. 20. <laughs> so you are already exceeded that. Exceeded. Sure. Very well. So I think uh, considering the time that we have, maybe one last question. Uh, things are going to get connected. They're already connected. Maybe the tsunami is already there. We're living in it. A uh, lot of customers, my customer, I'm sure your customers have been asking you privacy. You know, depend on the sector that you are, everybody is concerned about that data that's generated from those sensors. So, Harsha, maybe from your industry, if you have a question about privacy that your customers have been asking you, we have an expert on security here. You want to ask him a question as to how, what privacy issues you faced and how would you solve this? Yes, so, I have, when I talked about the energy product we released, so I can actually tell today this is real for a guy, a shop that brews tea. I can actually tell how many tea leaves are being put in the boiler, which boiler, because some of these guys use three boilers. So I can tell how much tea leaves are being put and how much it is getting boiled. Do you want to, you know, have that in your house? I mean, shop is fine because they want to know how much tea is being sold or coffee is being sold. But if I put it in our house, I can actually tell you that. Isn't that a problem? I mean, I feel that it's a problem. So I don't know how, we, how you think we can manage that. Yeah, I mean, if your better half thinks it's an issue that she's being monitored, <laughs> there's a problem, right? But I'll put it in a different way. Uh, so uh, there was a fantastic, not, not Isaac Asimov, right, who predicted that robots will rule the world and so on. And maybe that's going to come true, right, with 
all these futuristic things. But there was a book by Robert Ludlum in year 2000, right? And that, that's called The Prometheus Deception. Has anybody read it? The Prometheus Deception? Right. So, so there, the fantastic scientist turns a little mad and becomes a villain, like in all James Bond movies, right? And the thing is, he puts sensors at every one meter, everywhere on this earth, right? So everybody, he knows everything about everyone, what to do in the bathroom, rest, whatever, wherever, right? So the problem is, the privacy is totally invaded, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, if he's a benevolent guy, he will not misuse it. Mm -hmm. If he is not so benevolent, misuse can happen, right? So there's an ethics issue here, and there are many other such connotations which can come in. Like face recognition, for example, right? Now, the Aadhaar data, for example, Yesterday we had a fantastic lecture on Aadhaar. Now that is what 800 million people and it's in the hands of somewhere in the government. We don't know who's going to use it in what way, right? So there is a challenge with all this data, obviously. There is, there could be chaos, there could be so many different ways in which it can be looked into. Starun, maybe from your industry, a quick example of how the customer raised an issue about privacy and how did you address that? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a usual conventional uh, concern. You know, it's, it's, I'm, I've been listening about <laughs> security concern and data privacy concerns since 90s when internet came. How can I do online banking, True. stuff like that? How can I do booking? How can I leave my credit card number on the net? You know, so these are all concerns which is a passing by. It will go. It, it's a good dining uh, table mm -hmm. discussion. It's a good negotiation tool. It's a good resistance from the user that, you know, <laughs> something I don't want to adopt now, I'll wait for two years. So I see privacy not Ambiguous. more than that. Okay. It's a journey which has started, there is no U-turn. Right. Now, if there are some, yes, of course, there are every aspect, everything which you do have a positive and negative, there are some side effects. Sure. So the, the company working in data security and privacy, I'm sure they are 10 years ahead, whether it's a Cisco networking, whether it's, you know, all other companies, they are already thinking about all those issues and they are already being taken care of. So one need not to worry too much about privacy concerns. So That's what I tell you when my comp yeah. plants and they have got all their process data with us with, uh, you know, and uh, it's not being misused and abused or, or done anything. There are ways to protect and sure. safeguard so, and secure. So very you know. true. So only one point I want to make here is, Amit, is, though I know we are getting hungry, right? Yeah. Or, <laughs> but the thing is very simple. So when it comes to, let's say, people who are very software savvy and they're on the internet, they will give very strong passwords, right? It starts from there, giving strong passwords. There is very good uh, transport encryption. All those good things happen when you're doing e-commerce and so on, and still it is hacked, right? Yeah. And that's bound to happen. But when it comes to devices, because a lot of techies do it, and due to some reason, they will give passwords for devices as one, two, three, four. So what we have to do is, we have to resist from, so there are about 10, 25 vulnerabilities which the OWASP committee has found, right? So. <laughs> As, and it's not, the processes are not so strong there, right? So those processes should be made more stronger. All those 10, 25 vulnerabilities have to be catered to. And Sundar, going forward, there will be no password required, trust me. Very true. <laughs> I go to a device, device, no, I'm Tarun Mishra. Exactly. Owner, so, so don't worry about that. So okay. that's fantastic. All right, I think. That's uh, what should happen. We don't have too much li time left for questions, but maybe one question so that uh, I don't disappoint you. If there's a question we'll take. Could you repeat, please? Yeah. Yeah. There was a blog by a Facebook guy which says that the, pri uh, the baseline of privacy itself is changing. Yeah, so what you feel is private today may, might not be. Very true. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good point. That's a very… In our, time, in our time, hiding girlfriend's name from my father was a privacy <laughs> statement. Today, as a father, I would like to know how many girlfriends my son has. <laughs> right, fair enough. Okay, I think that's all what we got today. Thank you so much for staying back. And, uh,